Hey, good afternoon, everyone. I am with our automotive technology instructor, Mark Swain. He's here to talk to us about his program. So Mark, what do students learn about in automotive technology? In our automotive uh, technology program, they learn all aspects of automotive repair from the, the ground up. We do minor repairs, oil changes, uh, brake jobs. They actually get to go into modern engines like this Toyota engine we have here. Uh, they also get to go into transmissions. We do suspension and steering. Anything that has to do with automotive repair, we don't do any body work or paint work here, but we do all the other repairs and the performance, the brakes and alignments and stuff. So I'm noticing something suspending in the air. What's this? What do you all do with the cars? That is a car that was donated to us by Hyundai Manufacturing, and it's uh, actually each semester I let on certain engine classes, I let the students take the car pretty much all the way down and put it back together. Uh, that way they get to see how a car is assembled and how the components go together and come apart. And they get a lot of hands-on real world experience on modern cars that we get to are out on the road today. How many problems can go wrong with a car? <laughs> I know that, that sounds like an endless question. The small, you know, check engine light that everybody sees in their car, you can uh, have an average of anywhere from one thing causing it to 50 things causing that one simple check engine light. A lot of people think that you just replace a sensor and it fixes it. Well, we go into a little more depth and detail on that to be able to diagnose a part or a car where if that part doesn't fix it, how to figure out what is wrong with it using modern scan tools. So an automotive technology career definitely requires great critical thinking skills. Yes, it does. And a lot of times back years ago technicians made their money under the hood of a car and that's how they fix things now a lot of times we sit inside of a car with a computer hooked up to it and we do a lot of diagnosing that way without getting our hands dirty and but we know what area of the car to go into once we get out of it and go under the hood instead of going under the hood blind well how much time does that save because of upgraded technology uh, Back uh, years ago, before they had the uh, handheld scanners and the handheld onboard diagnostic, it was, you know, you could get into an hour, two or three hour diagnosing, diagnosing a, a misfire where you had to hook up a different machine to it. Now, uh, you're looking at five, 10 minutes most of the time. It'll pinpoint you to what area to go to, not the exact problem. So while we're talking about equipment, what equipment do we have here at Drake State that our students can get their hands on? We have all the modern uh, new scanners, and I don't teach just on one certain scanner. I've tried to branch out into three different ones. We also have a new state-of-the-art alignment machine. We do tires. Uh, any of the, all of our electrical stuff, we use lab scopes. And the new scanner, like I said, instead of going with one particular brand, I went with three different ones so the students will learn all applications of it. What types of careers are available to students who pursue an automotive technology career? Uh, you can leave here with a, either a short-term certificate or an associate's degree in automotive technology and you can pursue jobs as a technician at a dealership, at an independent shop, at a uh, mom and pop tire store. You can open your own business. Uh, there's also some of the local manufacturers picking up some of the students uh, equipment because we learn the basic ex aspects of a internal combustion engine so they can work on you know some of your agricultural equipment and other jobs service riders estimate riders for insurance companies and inspectors who go out and look at vehicles for other people so tell us about frank williams what are some opportunities there for our students frank williams has uh, been working with us with his dealerships he has here in town and we've uh, formed a partnership and he hires a lot of my students out of there and brings them in as apprentices and they you know some of them start out as apprentices some of them start out as uh, oil changers on their quick lane loop and they continue up the ladder and they work for him at like i think they're working at two different dealerships now and they advance through the ranks and uh, their goal is to keep them on as full-fledged technicians when they finish the, uh, the course here and what's the stereotype people have about the auto industry that you would like to debunk? Uh, the auto industry used to be for the way it looked when I was younger, is they let the ones who couldn't make it in other schools, you're gonna be a, a mechanic. We don't call each other mechanics, we're technicians. 
and now it's a very, very highly uh, skilled area where you have a lot of training and uh, you have to have a lot of knowledge of the internal workings of an engine, the electrical aspects of it, you have to know hydraulics uh, and the, elect like I said, the electrical laws and, and physics of that, plus just like an electrician or someone who works on electricity, now we're going into the hybrid and the electric vehicles. Out of curiosity, what inspired you to step into the industry? Uh, my family, my dad was in the business and since I was a young guy, that's all he had ever done. And uh, I actually went to school to be an electrician and stepped into this as soon as I finished the school. Hey. That was my passion. Like father, like son. Yes. All right, everyone, we just had a conversation with our automotive technology instructor, Mark Swain. Thank you, sir. Thank you.